Hello, my name is Jayesh. Welcome to the session that discusses the new Stop Service Request Process Flow capability, which is available from the 21A release of Oracle Utilities Customer Cloud Service. In this session, we will talk about this new feature and how it can impact your business. We will give you an overview of the new capability, followed by more detail to explain how you would use it and the benefits to your business. Then we will walk you through a demonstration. Finally, we will explain what you need to consider when implementing this feature in your business and provide you with some additional resources. Stopping servers is one of the key moments in the life cycle of a utility customer. In this release, we have introduced the Stop Service Request Process Flow capability. This helps call center agents process stop service requests efficiently in a consistent manner by guiding them through the common steps and actions for stopping service. A consistent process helps minimize errors as all the relevant information can be collected at the appropriate time from the customer that is required to successfully process a stop service request. Now, there are two main drivers for reimagining the stop service process and providing this new capability. These being to improve usability and to provide additional configurability compared to previous releases. For improved usability, we enhance the call center agent's experience throughout the entire contact with the customer. This is right from when the customer first calls up and a call center agent identifies and verifies the customer through to gathering the required information to process a stop service request. To help collect all the required information from the customer in an efficient manner, we consolidated the information to be collected into logical panels or steps within the process flow. This information will then be eventually applied to the relevant customer records such as person, account, service agreements and or premise. Also, only the necessary information required to process a stop service request is intended to be presented on the panels within a process flow. The second main driver was additional configurability. There are now multiple configuration options and extension points provided with a new capability to support various business requirements. As mentioned earlier, the new Stop Service Request Process Flow capability helps call center agents process stop service requests efficiently in a consistent manner by guiding them through the common steps and actions for stopping service. Here are some of the major highlights of the new capability. There is a visual representation at the top of most process flow panels so a call center agent can easily see where they are in a process flow. At the end of a process flow, a final summary displays key information for the stop service request. A call center agent can save an in-progress process flow. A saved process flow can then be resumed at a later stage to continue processing the stop service request. One or more additional persons may be attached to the account linked to the stop service request. For this, there is an inline person search capability to allow a call center agent to easily identify and then link additional persons to the account. If required, they can also unlink additional persons that are already linked to the account, for example, a flatmate who will no longer be associated with the main account holder. A call center agent can also capture new and updated details for certain predefined attributes. And as mentioned earlier, the configurability associated with processing stop service requests has been greatly expanded compared to what was available in previous releases. There are several business controls or configuration options and extension points to support various business requirements. Now, the new capability is an alternative option for processing stop service requests rather than using the existing start-stop transaction. Now, let's take a look at this new feature so you can see how the stop service request process flow capability can be used by your business. This simulated demonstration is for a customer who is moving out of a property and not moving into another property at this stage. One of the ways to initiate a process flow for a stop service request is via the stop service option from the moving service drop down in the premise tree dashboard zone. Now the stop service request process flow capability consists of a few key objects. A stop service request process flow guides a call center agent step by step 
to capture all the required information from the customer to successfully process a stop service request. This process flow is based on a specific process flow type. In addition to the process flow type, it also references a specific stop service customer service request type. This customer service request type contains the various configuration options that controls the behavior of the process flow. The customer service request type also defines the type of parent and child customer service request to be created to assist in processing a stop service request. This processing includes the updating of person, account, service agreement and or premise records. Let's now look at a process flow for a stop service request based on the base product delivered stop service related process flow type in a bit more detail. The first main step or panel is services to stop. This panel is primarily used to capture the details when and what services are to be stopped. Now, at the top of most panels, there's a train user interface or UI element. This allows a call center agent to easily see how far along they are in the overall process flow. There is also a summary header on most panels. This provides high level information for the stop service request, such as information for the account linked to the premise and context for a stop service request and the stop date. In this example, the stop date for stopping service is currently blank as this has not yet been entered. This will be displayed once the stop date has been entered by the call center agent. After the call center agent populates a stop date for a stop service request, the panel displays the various services for the account that are eligible to be stopped. Now, some services may be checked or selected by default to be stopped, while others may not be. This is what occurs. The services at the premise and context are selected or checked to be stopped by default. Non-premise based services with a characteristic premise matching the premise and context may also be selected to be stopped by default. Other premises and non-premise based services for the account are not selected to be stopped by default. The call center agent then, if required, selects or unselects services to be stopped to override any default selections. In addition to this, if configured on the reference customer service request type, the call center agent is presented with several predefined attributes. Some premise based attributes may need to be updated as a result of stopping service. New and updated information captured on the process flow is later applied to the related premise record. A call center agent may also be able to capture stop service notes to pass the field activities for stopping service. When the next button is clicked, the call center agent is navigated to the second main step or panel of the process flow for the stop service request. This is the person and account details panel. This is where all other person and account related information is gathered. The various sections on this panel include main person, other persons on account, auto pay and other account details. We will now look at each of these in a bit more detail. Let's look at main person first. Here the call center agent can verify and or capture specific information for some predefined person related attributes. These may include life support and sensitive load notes, additional phone numbers and so on. They may also capture whether the customer wishes to receive any future bills via email through the paperless billing option and also indicate where the mailing address for the customer is obtained from. An implementation configures which predefined attributes may appear here. New and updated information captured on the process flow is later applied to the related person and or account records. The second section on the person and account details panel is related to other persons on account. If configured to do so on the reference customer service request type, the call center agent may be presented with information about other persons linked to the account. The call center agent can remove other persons linked to the account if requested, 
for example, if a flatmate is no longer going to be associated with the account. The call centre agent can also verify and or capture specific information for some predefined person related attributes for other persons already linked to the account. An implementation configures which predefined attributes may appear here. New and updated information captured on the process flow is later applied to the related person and or account records. The call centre agent can also add other persons to the account for the stop service request. When they click the add another person button, a person search window opens up to allow them to search for the applicable person record. The person's name may be optionally combined with a phone number, email address and or primary identifier for the search. An implementation configures whether a phone number and or email address may be used as search options. An implementation also configures which types of primary identification may be used as search options. From the return list they can select the applicable person record to be linked to the account. The third section on the Person and Account Details panel is related to Autopay. Here, the call centre agent captures whether the customer wishes to pay any future bills by automatic payment and then captures the required details. The fourth section on the Person and Account Details panel is related to other account details. Here, the call centre agent can verify and or capture specific information for some additional predefined account attributes. An implementation configures which predefined attributes may appear here. New and updated information captured on the process flow is later applied to the related account record. When the call centre agent clicks the finish button, they are transferred to the summary panel. The summary panel is the end of the process flow for a stop service request. Now, as mentioned earlier, along with the process flow, Parent and Child Customer Service Requests are also created for the Stop Service Request. Here is the Parent Customer Service Request that was created for our particular Stop Service Request. This is based on the Reference Customer Service Request type for the process flow. Now, once a process flow is completed, the Parent Customer Service Request takes over. Several things then occur. Person and account records are updated with any new and updated information captured on the process flow. All service agreements that need to be stopped are initiated to be stopped. And a customer contact is created if configured to do so to additionally capture the interaction with the customer. The parent customer service request then waits and monitors the various service agreements that were initiated to be stopped. Once all these pending stop service agreements have been stopped, the parent customer service request initiates the update of the applicable premise records with any new and updated information captured on the process flow. The stop service request is then considered complete. The updating of person, account, service agreement and or premise records are all performed by specific child customer service requests which are managed by the parent customer service request. For updating person, account and premise records, each record has a corresponding child customer service request. These being customer service request person, customer service request account and customer service request premise. Likewise, for updating service agreements to be stopped, each service agreement record has a corresponding child customer service request SA record. These child customer service requests can be considered to be staging records that update various master records for a customer. For further information about the stop service request process, refer to the stop service process and request section in the customer to meter business user guide. In this implementation advice section, we will go through what you need to consider to enable the stop service request process flow capability in your business. There are two main tasks that you should complete to enable the new capability. First, you must configure one or more customer service request types for stop service request processing. 
These contain the business controls or configuration options and extension points to support various business requirements. Process flows and backend customer service requests use these for processing stop service requests. Next, you must configure an action method for stop service request processing. When initiating a stop service request, the solution initially creates a process flow and stop service customer service request for backend processing. The process flow type and customer service request type for these are derived from the action method. For further information on these tasks, please see the Implementing Stop Service Request Process Flow video for more information. For additional information about the new Stop Service Request Process Flow capability, please see the Oracle Utilities Customer Cloud Service Library on Oracle Help Center, which is available at docs.oracle.com. This concludes this presentation. Thank you for watching.